Welcome back to the Ross Bolin Podcast, otherwise known as RBP, presented by Bolin Media. I am your host, Ross Bolin, here today for the first time ever with my new number two. Bolin Media employee number two has arrived. You are looking at him if you're on youtube.com slash Bolin Media. I can point this way and it looks like I'm pointing at you. Uh, Chris Colson. Chris, say hi to the people quickly. Hello, everybody. We hit a workout this morning. Ross Fit is back in full swing. We have all the endorphins and all of the nerves for today's episode. I haven't been nervous for a recording since I knew I was going to have to speak to Scarface on the phone, which is obviously nerve-wracking when you've never spoken to Scarface on the phone. Um, and I, even I'm nervous today. So Chris is going to have some nerves. I'm going to have some nerves. It, we're, we've been looking forward to this for what? I Five months, months. At the lead it, uh, yeah, months at the, at the least. We knew. Uh, we'll, we'll get to this a little bit more, and we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit more, and let let Chris tell you a little bit about himself in our first segment. Um, but we've known this day was coming for quite a while. It is something I have looked forward to, maybe more than I've ever looked forward to anything in my entire life, based on the amount of work that I had to do this past year, sort of solo dolo to get here. Um, but first, some announcements and shouts. Happy birthday to Savannah. Uh, and also, Dez did not catch it. I'm sorry, he made me say it. You know who it was. Uh, TFM Readings Chapters 1 through 11 are now available on YouTube.com slash Media. If you've missed any of the readings from the TFM book that we've been doing every Sunday at 9 p.m. Central on Twitch.tv slash Boss Roland, they are all available on YouTube.com slash Media for you to take in and watch. And this is important because this upcoming Sunday at 9 p.m. Central on Twitch.tv slash Boss Roland, we will be doing the final chapter, chapter 12, and the prologue or eulogy or epilogue or whatever the fuck it's called. Um, and then, for, by the way, for chapter 10 or 11, 11, Chris was there with me and kind of sitting in the background uh, getting to listen to this ridiculous chapter. It was called Road Trip Raging. And we had a blast. Go check it out, youtube.com slash Media. And huge shouts to everybody who's tuned in when we are live on twitch.tv slash Boss Rolling. Chris and I played a good deal of Warzone last night, kind of switching off in the, uh, in the chair on the comp, and we had a blast. But actually, craziest shit ever happened. Um, I'm sitting there playing, and Chris is sitting right behind me on the couch, right? And I hear, I've got headphones on, and I'm playing Warzone. There's fucking gunfire everywhere. And I hear him say something. He's like, you're about to be, uh, I think you're being raided by Dugs. And it kind of clicked in my head, and I was like, Dugs. Why do I know that name? And then it occurred. And if, for those of you who are unaware, Dan Katz, otherwise known as Barstool Big Cat, one of the two hosts uh, with PFT of PMT, pardon my take, the most popular sports podcast in the fucking world. Yeah. Um, Dan started doing something during quarantine period here where we've all been screwed and there are no sports, where he's playing NCAA 2014, uh, I believe it is as Coach Duggs, and uh, if you haven't seen it, I don't know how that's possible. You just must not be on social media, but the point is this. He raided our stream, which means that every single viewer he had was taken over to our stream, and now you need to keep this in mind. I'm used to a maximum of like, you know, 65 to 75 viewers, and we watched it spike in less than a minute from that to what? 7,000 people. Yeah, it's quite a few. Quite a few people. I needed a fresh pair of shorts immediately. Um, it was like, there's footage of my reaction on our social media already on, uh, on the Ross Boland Podcast, Twitter and Instagram, but it was fucking madness. Literally, the stream crashed. It couldn't even handle all the comments we were getting, most of which were telling me that my audio was muted or that I was a simp or a pedophile, <laughs> all of which made me laugh. It was just like the most chaotic several minutes of my entire life. Um, our average viewership was up like, one million percent and the stat recap as chris pointed out to me yesterday from our next stream that we do like tonight is going to be the most depressing thing ever when it's like your viewership is down one million percent yeah yeah dude but it was really really cool huge shouts to dan um for those of you who are unaware dan katz actually is my mentor like my professional mentor at this point he's taken me on as a mentee um and we've just kind of gotten started with that relationship as a result of everything that's gone on with COVID. it was sort of delayed but Great dude. Couldn't be more appreciative of him rating our stream and giving us that kind of audience to work with. We picked up a shit ton of new followers, and I got to talk some good shit to all the followers that were in there talking shit to me. It was a lot of fun. We had a blast. Always tune in on Twitch.tv slash Boss Roland, B-O-S-S-R-O-L-E-N, 
when you see where live Warzone is the focus right now. But we are going to be doing a lot more on Twitch in the coming months. So prepare that ass. Follow, subscribe, share. We're getting the fucking N64 and the Super Nintendo and all the old video games I have set up so that we can run some of those as well. But uh, enough of that. Enough of the announcements. Let's do this. Let's get into it. First segment. Introducing your new co-host, Chris Coulson. So today is a day I have waited for, as I said, for literally over a year. I've been doing this shit alone, um, legit almost every episode, just yammering away to myself like a street person who hit the meth pipe too many times. I'm doing all the social media, all the writing, all the marketing, all the planning and scheduling and failing to do any of that um, to the extent that it's needed. And finally, finally, my number two is here. My dude is here. Um, Chris, you're you're 21 years old. Tell us where you're from, man. So I'm from... Lake Norman, North Carolina, which is a suburban town about 20 minutes north of Charlotte, North Carolina. Great okay. city. If you've ever had the chance to visit Charlotte, uh, it, I have you'll, not. Know, you'll know it's a fantastic city. If you have not, absolutely visit. I was blessed enough on Lake Norman to grow up geographically on a lake. 20 minutes away from a big city, an hour and a half from the mountains, and three hours from the beach. So yeah, North your Carolina, Instagram makes me feel ashamed about my life. I do like to get outside and enjoy life as much as I can. Uh, like I said, I've been really blessed with a lot of really awesome opportunities and even better people growing up where I grew up. And, um, you know, it'd be a shame to waste all of that. So I've tried to make, especially the last, I would say, probably two years, try to make, you know, every day as best as I can make it, stay present and live it up. Absolutely. Um, Chris and I actually met ironically, through gaming. Um, As y'all know, as I've spoken to before, at the end of October last year, when my wife left me, uh, I bought a gaming PC the next fucking day. I ordered it the next day. And when it came in, I started encouraging listeners of RBP to come through and play Apex Legends with me, which at the time was like my game of choice, right? And Chris was one of the first people who did with his gamer tag, Coles. His last name is Colson. His gamer tag is Coles, Q U zero L S. Q zero U L S. As is tradi- thank you. As is tradition with uh, with gamers, we like to throw in a fucking number here and there. Got to. Um, and that's how we got to know each other, man. We played Apex Legends together for months, and then it became very apparent to me, based on all the conversations that Chris and I had, that as I had put it long ago, I was looking for me ten years ago, right? Yeah. That was the whole goal to find somebody. Um, like I said, he's 21 years old, so we're bridging the gap between my aging old ass at 33 and our core audience, which is 18 to 25, obviously. And I'm not saying, like, I don't know shit about Shinola, but, like, he knows about, like, anime and shit. I know about shit like fucking Friends and Ross Geller. By the way, this motherfucker has never seen Friends. I tried. Just wasn't, I don't, just wasn't for me. It wasn't my thing. It just amazes me. That's an amazing thing for him to no- have, have never watched. But, um... Chris has never done a podcast in his entire life before. Number one. This is number one. Yeah. So welcome the kid. Follow him on social media. Chris, throw out all your social medias real quick. Yeah, so on Twitter, uh, my Twitter is Chris Coulson215, C-O-U-L-S-O-N. On Instagram, it is, actually, no, I changed it. I'm sorry. My Twitter is now Coles, Q-0-U-L-S. Uh, my Instagram is Chris S C nine nine, and my Snapchat is Chris underscore Colson again C O U L S O N. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, I'm still pretty good about checking my DMs right now. They haven't been flooded like Ross's yet. My Snapchats go directly to me regardless of if I've added you back or not. So if you really want to talk to me, probably hit me up on Snapchat. I'll get back to you pretty quickly. Uh, but make sure you follow me on there. Keep up with what we're doing. Um, these next couple months are going to be insane. We want to make sure you guys are a part of the journey as much as possible. So make sure you follow us both. Keep involved. Uh, and I'm, I'm super excited to be here and to really like show you guys what it's like to be a part of this journey. Yeah. Um, follow him everywhere and support him in the same way that you have me. That would be my request for all of you listening. Chris is a, uh, I would call you already, a mental health advocate um, and a mental health patient, as am I, right? Yeah. One of the original things that you and I talked about on Twitch was some of your battles with mental health, um, and obviously everyone on this show is more than familiar with mine, so if you would just briefly give us a little outline, and now this is something we'll get into much more in the future, but like, you know, just briefly explain. Absolutely, and can I touch on our introduction on Apex, kind of how that evolved as well, too? Touch on whatever you want, dude, just just don't touch me. (laughs) Um, So... (laughs) 
I'll start with uh, I'll start with how exactly Ross and I got introduced and met and everything like that. So it was probably about November, I want to say, when we first started playing Apex Legends. Yep. I'll be honest, it helped out a little bit that I'm really good at video games. He uh, he used to cr- he he carried me hard. So Ross and I played for a long time together, and just being good at video games, I think Ross wanted to keep me coming back at first before we really knew each other. Just right, because right. we would get wins, and it was nice to have entertaining, high pace Apex Legends content. And like I said, we were mixing in different listeners. Like you listened to the show before. Yeah. Oh, that's a whole nother thing. I, I discovered RBP on episode twenty two. I want to say I went back to try to find the exact one, and I'm pretty sure, pretty confident that episode twenty two was when I discovered Ross. This will play into my mental health struggle as well. But with Apex, Ross and I started playing together about January rolls around. We really start our friendship and and relationship growing as future business partners, friends at the time. Um, And it went excellent. We had our first phone call interview on Super Bowl Sunday, actually. So February 9th. Oh, I forgot that even happened. (laughs) And uh, I might have been violently stoned. It went great. I thought it went great. Ross, obviously, who knows? Doesn't It must have gone great. I hired you. There we go. Um, so that happened and he was like, we need to get you down here as quickly as possible. Get your ass in the studio, uh, have a chance to meet in person, everything like that. And then coronavirus hit. So at that point I really thought maybe this whole thing was down the drain, wasn't going to happen. Right. Luckily Ross either has a genius financial planner or did a really good job saving his money. It was actually just pure fucking luck based on the way things went in 2019 where I was like stockpiling cash in an effort to like, you know, make sure that the business would survive. But we fortunately did well enough to where it was like, okay, I can still do this. I can pull trigger on Chris. And So luckily April rolls around and Ross kind of reaches out again and is like, look, I really think that we can still make this happen. We still need to get you down here as soon as possible. He sends me a video one night of him ripping the bong on the back porch and he's like, book the ticket, book the fucking ticket, Coles. And so that night at like 11.59 p.m., I booked the ticket to fly down to Austin, Texas. Uh, come down May 15th, Ross was generous enough to put me up for the weekend. We had a fantastic interview. Like he's said a couple of times, I think it was pretty much a 48 hour straight interview. Uh, oh yeah. Three hours of which I was physically trapped in a car with him and could not go anywhere if it ever got bad. <laughs> um, yeah, he drove me to Waco to get my dog. I man. was like driving, I was his chauffeur to pick up his dogs as a part of his divorce. It was like we were swapping children. It was very interesting. <laughs> one of the most, it, by far, I don't know if I will ever in the rest of my life have an interview that tops that one, if I'm being completely yeah, honest. Well, hopefully you'll never have another interview again. Exactly. That's the plan. That's why we're here. Um, but yeah, so everything like that, just kind of the universe really played a great role in that and everything kind of falling into place, which played a lot into, you know, mental health transition over the last year so i'll get into my mental health struggles now that's yeah. when i discovered ross so like i said discovered ross about episode 22 at that time i was a freshman in college at the university of south carolina uh i thought i wanted to be a business major climb the corporate ladder uh be a frat boy you know your typical sec school kind of thing sure um my mom's a very successful businesswoman, so i've always th- and i was pretty good at sales i sold wakeboard boats for a year or two we'll get to that at another time but anyways I thought business was really what I wanted to do because I'm good at talking to people. Right. Um, And once I got there and I joined a fraternity and I was in the business program and I was becoming your, you know, pretty typical Chad, if you want to say it like that. You can. Um, We've got Karen. We've got Karen. We got Chad. We got all kinds of people whose names have been ruined by stereotypes. Honestly. Um, And so I kind of realized that. As this was happening, this was also the first time that I really started to struggle with depression and anxiety. At the time, I had no idea what it was. I called it a funk, um, and I told my roommate I was in a funk. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, I like went to doctors, and they were like, "Yeah, nothing is wrong with you. I don't don't know what to tell you here, bud." Uh, Like your general physician or whatever. Yeah, general physician. Yeah, those people don't know dick. Every blood test in the system. I thought I had an STD for a while. Had no STD. Like I thought I had everything. Love how you get that out of the way up front. Yeah, he's no STDs, guys. I'm good. I promise. Um, That makes two of us, by the way. Um, (laughs) So then. So yeah, then get to school, and when I discovered Ross's podcast. he really helped as well as discovering weed at the same time with kind of opening up my emotional vulnerability and becoming more okay with who I was and what I was going through. Right. Um, feeling the normalization of it rather than feeling like you're I was fucking... an outcast or messed up or something like that. You made it feel like it was something that – it was just – some people have it, and when you have it, it's part of life. You work through it. You get through it every day. You do the best you can. That's all you can do. And there are dozens of us. And dozens! There, yeah, literally. You're not alone. You're never alone. Exactly. Um, and so when I discovered his podcast, it really, really started to help my growth personally. 
um, in learning emotional vulnerability. And I started to realize that our my generation specifically has a significant issue with males being in tune with their emotions without thinking that it's feminist or gay or you know what i right, mean right, like right, it's right. a very weird thing with guys Th- my throwing age throwing like w- vibes on it that don't need to at all yeah. there's nothing wrong at all with talking about your emotions and being vulnerable and so now i really do my best to go out of my way to be as vulnerable as i can and put it all out there because i've learned through people like ross and discovering other things about myself i've learned that that's by far the way to go and this is you guys will hear plenty plenty more about this in the in the future but now Going along the journey with Ross, being a listener for three years now, pretty much, and now having the ability to give back and do onto others what he could help for me to be able to make an impact, even on one person or leave a lasting impact on one single person, that's, you know, changing the world in your own little way. And so that's the biggest thing about me being here now is that I am just beyond thrilled and humbled and excited to be able to give back to you guys the same way that Ross was able to give back to me. Um, and so that's really the biggest thing and what this is all about for me. Um, I think I, I know knowing Ross and I that Bolin Media's success will come in the future, no doubt about it. Um, but to be able to make meaningful impact along that path is huge. And we can't wait to do that for you guys. Dude, it's, uh, it's been a weird experience, like doing it alone. Yeah. Um, because as those of you who have listened for a long time know, this was never my intention. Like the plan was not to like do bowling media and then come in and do every episode by my fucking self. Yeah. Like that just no. Why would anybody want to do that? But because of the way shit unfolded last year, where like I had the big D uh, divorce, well both, and then I had uh, I ha- we had COVID. Um, like it, j- we still have COVID. It just fucked things up to where it was like, I don't know what the shit, like, Jared, who was regularly co-hosting with me, like, got a full-time job. AJ, who was regularly co-hosting with me, got a full-time job. It just ended up in a spot where I was like, like I said at the beginning, me in here yammering to myself for a fucking hour nonstop, which I actually got really good at, thankfully. But some of those first episodes, uh, yeah, I see why some of y'all bounced. Um... Point being, it's been a long time coming, and I'm very much looking forward to, as Chris said, y'all experiencing the growth of Bowling Media as a result of this hire, because y'all don't know how, I mean, I know some of you know, but like, there's so much stuff we can do and that can be done that we haven't been able to do just because I don't have the time or the energy, especially because of some of the mental health struggles that I've gone through myself, right? So Chris and I have sort of been able to lean on each other long distance would through the mental health stuff and that was like the original conversation that that showed me like holy shit okay this could be my kid this could be the kid right here that we need on the squad to take this shit to the next level and then the more just based on the mental health stuff alone and his perspective on it because for a 21 year old keep in mind i was 21 years old when i had my first panic attack and my perspective at that point on life was incredibly fucking limiting Uh, i didn't know a whole lot about a whole lot i thought i did but I didn't know shit, and when I spoke to you about some of the mental health stuff just streaming, it became very apparent that you were way ahead of where I was at that point on the mental health side, which was like, it just had, gave me an immediate respect for you. From there, uh, the more that we got to sort of hang out online and talk, I figured out that you were very funny and smart, and I was like, oh, fuck, this is going to work. So yeah, when, when just to touch on the interview again real quick, when I flew him down, the first night he literally had to talk to me for six hours straight. That was a six-hour conversation. To be had. fair, I didn't... It w- it's This was not a forced conversation by any way, well, but shape, But you had form. no choice. Uh, that's fair. That's you, fair. What, were you going to run out of the house? Okay, that's true. That's very true. But, I mean, this when we're not, like, sitting down across from the table each other looking... I, I, at one point, Ross is sitting on his kitchen counter. Uh, my back's against the floor. We're just talking... And we're talking about religion. Like... I'm on the floor. He's on the counter. He's. I, I remember we were a little vividly. High. He said, "We got a little, deep. just a little high." Yeah. And he's just a little high. I'm just a little high. <laughs> and he said, "I mean, fuck, man. We've already talked about everything else. You want to just knock out religion?" And yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Let's do it, man. Let's get it rolling. Yeah, and it's um, Chris brings a lot of different perspectives on a lot of shit that I have. I have slightly different views on. So it's like. We have an incredible balance, y'all. Y'all will see over the coming episodes. But uh, all in all, it's just, it ended up being a very good fit. I'm yeah. super excited to have you here. Obviously, 
Um, and and you deserve a lot of credit too, dude, because it's not and your family. It's not easy to take a jump into something like this. Because I remember when I did, I was employee number three at a company that the first two employees were the founders. Yeah, the co-founders, yeah. So you were basically doing exactly what I did. And I remember at the time, like, uh, well, actually, for me, it was a little easier because my parents were like, you literally have no other opportunities. You have to take this job. And I was like, all right, I was going to. Fuck. Um, But working on TFM and all that, it was just like, I remember the experience up front. And it did take guts. It Mm. took like, cause you know, I mean, dude, it's a startup, bro. Like, it's a fucking risk. You have to believe in the perp. You have to believe in the platform, in the yeah. message, in everything that we're doing, for it to work. And it became so apparent that Chris did that. I was like, yeah, 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 this is my dude. And we interviewed what, like, six or seven other people. I interviewed six or seven other people, all of which were incredible candidates. Everybody that applied, I appreciate you. All of y'all that have reached out to me for either an opportunity in the future on Bowling Media or that, that tried to get this this co-host position, like, do not be discouraged by that because, like I said, Chris and I just so it was a fate thing, man. We met through total chance on fucking gaming. Completely random. Got to know each other for six months, crushes the interview, and he's here. But in the future, the idea is that Chris and I are going to build this thing to where there are other opportunities for other people to come in and contribute and be employees as well. So that will be the next step. Um, I did want to quickly share a story. You mentioned that you were in business school at USC, yes, right? Yes, I was. By the way, does it ever bug you that University of South Carolina and University of Southern California both get the USC thing? It bugged a lot of people that went to South Carolina, but like I didn't grow up a South Carolina fan. Um, neither of my parents really. Been, what did you grow up a school. fan of? So that's another thing. My my dad went to a really small two year school and played football there called Chowan in northern North Carolina and in Murfreesboro, North Carolina. And my mom went to UNC Charlotte, which up until three years ago, I want to say, didn't have a football team. So, And my granddad is a down south, deep south, Alabama country boy who's a diehard Roll Tide fan. And I just couldn't pull the trigger to roll pull for the Alabama cl- Crimson Tide all the time. <laughs> you I just don't have enough of the tie there. And people would Too much ask, winning. You know it got I mean? boring. Yeah, exactly. Um, so college football never really was my thing. But growing up, my dad bought season tickets for the Panthers, their inaugural season in 95. Section 533, row 11, seats 4, 5, 6, and 7. Same seats the entire time. He's had the exact same ones. We still have them. Um, so I grew up a diehard Panthers fan. So NFL kind of took the place of college football for me. I still watch a lot of college football, but I wouldn't really say I have a team to pull for, except for App State recently, just because I have a lot of friends that play for App State. Oh, word? And they've been kind of crushing it, too. They're That's very like, random. Yeah, but, they're I mean, great program, really cool school. If you ever have the chance to go to Appalachian State, it's beautiful. little mountain town up there, Boone, North Carolina. Another thing you and I have in common, by the way, I never had a college football team. I grew up with, like, a shit ton of Aggies. Yeah. Um, but as I've said many times, those y'all are freaks. Y'all are a cult. And uh, all, my whole damn family's Aggies, by the way. So yeah, I'm got not... lunch with an Aggie yesterday. She was wearing the ring. Uh, and I, I The was ring ag- alone is enough to make you be like, what the shit? Yeah, and it's very bright. Like, it's not subtle. Like, no. when you see the ring, I didn't even have to. I, she they look like championship yeah, rings. No. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You and graduated from deal. fucking college. It's not that big of a deal. Jesus Christ. Uh, but yeah. So... I'm just jealous. I want a ring. <laughs> the only one I have now is this half tattoo. Which, by the way, if at some point, if any of y'all are a fucking laser tattoo removal person, holler at your boy. I, I, I just, this, it's gotta go. It's gotta go. It's, it looks like I drew uh, with a fucking golden crayon a wedding ring onto my finger, which is, which is not what happened. But I did want to say a story real quick. Um, when I got to Texas State, I had obviously a, a, a terrible GPA in high school. Mm-hmm. I was not in the top ten percent. I'll just put it that way. In fact, I was the fifty second percentile. In a high school that should have been, I'll say, fairly easy for me based on just my general intelligence to be much higher than that. That is above halfway, though. So It was right below halfway, 50 Wait, seconds. Wait, I thought percentiles go the, I don't know, I don't know. No, I was in the bottom damn oh, half. Okay, okay. Yeah, but they well, fucked yeah. up my transcript, so when I applied to Texas State, they thought I was 52nd in my class. And my class had like 1,600 people in it or whatever. So that's huge. So they were probably like, why the fuck is he even here? So the second that I went to orientation, they were like, dude, you need to be in business school. And they made me fill out the McCoy business school application, and I got in immediately, um, which I was promptly <laughs> thrown out of after my first semester <sighs> after achieving a .40 GPA. That may do it. All this is to say that I, too, once had business aspirations. And look where we are now, delinquents co-hosting and hosting a podcast. And now we're running a business. 
Yeah, oh, God. you suckers. Oh, God, help us. But, yeah, Chris is here, stoked. Um, y'all are going to get to know him a lot more over the course of the coming months, obviously. We didn't want to, like, just fucking unload all of Chris in one day. That would be strange and awkward, probably. But uh, I couldn't be more excited, like I said. The dude drove 16 fucking hours. His parents are bringing his shit down on Tuesday evening, I think, yeah. too, coming down as well. Yeah, shout out to the pa- to the rents, for sure. They've been hugely supportive in this whole move and everything like that. Rick and Diane, incredible people. Thank super you, Rick excited. and Diane, for trusting me with your baby boy, super, by the way. Super excited for them. To, yeah, uh, D- my mom, Diane, she was like, yeah, there's no way I'm leaving Austin without meeting Ross and having a full sit-down interview. I need to make sure he's okay <laughs> for you. Well, hopefully I will be. Mama Bear got to watch out. Dude, that just means you have good parents. There we that's, go. That's a they good are the sign. best. They're the that's a good people. sign. Y'all follow Chris everywhere again. Throw the, throw the socials out again one All more right, time. We'll do it one more time. On Twitter, I am at Q0ULS. On Instagram, I am at ChrisSC99. <laughs> and on Snapchat, I am at Chris underscore Colson, C O U L S O N. And we're going to work on getting that branding unified across the board at some point. Eventually, it'll come. I'm just at WR Bolin everywhere, if you didn't know that. Yeah, Ross makes it too easy. I want to make you guys work for it a little bit. Except on Twitch, Boss Rolling. Because then I know if they're looking me up, they took the time to look up that specific one. You know, it's just a little more special. It's more meaningful? More meaningful. Are you saying your followers are more valuable than mine? I would say so. (laughs) At the current moment, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Fair enough, fair enough. RBP312 is also brought to you by Bird Dogs, makers of the most comfortable all-purpose shorts in the fucking world. You can literally wear them to do anything, anywhere, at any time. They're just gym shorts with a built-in silky soft inner liner that makes underwear obsolete, but they got incredible color combos. I have about nine pairs of these things at this point. They're shockingly comfortable. It literally feels like you're wearing nothing, like you're just walking around naked with with no bottoms on, like Pooh Bear, like Winnie the Pooh. They dry faster than a bathing suit. Bird dogs, you can hit a workout, jump straight into the pool, get out, dry off in the sun, then wear them to drive around in your Tesla because you have a Tesla now, then drive that Tesla back home, wash it with your Golden Retriever Elvis because you're wearing bird dogs and bitch. You can do anything. Chris, you got any bird dogs? I do have a pair of bird dogs. I gave you a pair. You did give me a pair of bird dogs. Comfy as fuck, eh? Absolutely. It really does feel like you're wearing nothing. Actually, I took your advice and tried having sex in the bird dogs because I forgot that they were on. (laughs) It's something that happens. Watch out, people. Look, man, I do say you can make love in them in every ad read. Which I assumed at least one person would have tried. I didn't know that it would be you. I did it for you. Don't worry, yeah. guys. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, go to birddogs.com. Enter the promo code RBP when you check out. They will throw in a free bird dogs face mask, which we can all use right now. It's like a condom, but for your mouth. Free bird dogs face mask along with your pair of bird dogs. They're very high quality masks, actually. Beautiful, beautiful mask. Birddogs.com. Code RBP. Boom. Free bird dogs face mask with your order. Enjoy your bird dogs. You will never want to take them off. I promise. They're a safe space for all your most valuable possessions. Next segment. The Fresh Prince of Cuck. Chris, over the weekend, unfortunately for all of us who were starting to forget that Will Smith leads one of the, like, strangest lives ever and is a Hollywood freak show, like he's wrapped up in the Scientology shit on the same level as, like, Tom Cruise and fucking John Travolta... And on the heels of rapper Joyner Lucas's incredible, that he did that song called Will, that's just that, I'm feeling like Will, an incredible song, and then Will Smith hopped on the remix with him, and I gotta say his verse wasn't very good, but that's just me, I've never been a big Will Smith rap fan, I'll just be, I need cuss words, vulgarity, uh, murder, drugs, and mayhem. Will has always been a clean rapper, and that was one of the things that made him so impressive with his career, bro, because he crushed without needing curse words. He to be fair, he brought that up in that verse as well, and it just kind of came across as a little corny when he brought it up to himself in his own verse, but that's okay. In all fairness, I think every verse he's ever done is corny, but it's that's just his brand, that's dude. Right, it's yeah. like, you gotta own who you are and I mean, do look where thing. he is now. Obviously, he had a plan in mind, or maybe he didn't. It just all worked out perfectly. He is obviously one of the more talented uh, actors, musicians, and just all-around performers and entertainers ever. All right? That goes without saying, but... Dude is a freak show, okay? And this weekend, news broke that his wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, carried on a relationship with uh, some kid named August. Is it is it August Ames? No, that's a dead porn star. It's August. Uh, rest in peace, August Ames. Um, August fucking something. It's August Alsina. That's it. August Alsina. 
So she carried on a relationship with this dude who's t- August Alsina, who's 20. 20- By the way, I've never heard of this guy. Never heard of the rapper. He's a musician, apparently. 21 years her, her junior, okay? Yeah. Which is a gap, dude. Just that's, a bit. That's two generations, That's okay? my entire life. Not that it can't be done. That's the entirety of you, the time you've been alive. And his. He's like 22, so like... He was born. No, he's 27 now. Oh, he's 27. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. But this was four years ago. Yes, and they had 21 years between. Okay, yeah, them. yeah, or still have. I guess that 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 gap stays the same because that's how time works. Unless go. you're watching Dark, in which case I don't know how time works. Um, but here's what happened. Okay, this dude August Alsina did an interview with one of the Breakfast Club hosts. Y'all know the Breakfast Club with uh, with Charlemagne the God. It's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, hip hop shows. In the entire world, it was featured in uh, in the season finale of Dave, season one, if you were looking for a reference point. He did an interview with one of the hosts talking about his relationship with Jada and how much he loved her and shit, right? Which was is awkward because he, he, he she's married to Will Smith. Yeah. Um, well, and people t- didn't know about the relationship publicly. publicly. Nobody knew about this yet. Yeah. yeah. It so was it not felt- something that they had addressed. No. So from there, the media starts running with it, right? And there's all these headlines and crazy gossip columns and all this shit to the point that, of course, Jada and Will feel it necessary to do one of their little, what they have this show, that red table talks that they do, where they do, it's basically like interviews where they address like difficult situations and subjects and stuff. And it's not always the Smith family. They have guests and stuff on old episodes, but this is just literally a red table, looks exactly like the one I'm sitting at now, except it's red. And on one side, you Jada Pinkett Smith, and on the other side, you've got Will Smith. And the interview is them, like, clearing the air about what happened, letting everyone know what's what. And I'll tell you, Chris, as we watched last night, because we were actually, we raided uh, Arian Foster, a.k.a. Bobby Fino, when our stream ended, and he was speaking on this thing when we raided him, um, what we found is that things went horribly fucking wrong. Terribly wrong. It yeah. couldn't have been a more awkward situation. I've never seen somebody in more pain, I don't think, than Will Smith in that interview. He, in his eyes. He looks like he wants to die. Like, it, look, the whole time she's talking, and he keeps throwing out, like, and what'd you do, Jada? All the time. Over and over again. And, and what dra- did you do, Jada? He drops these little one line. Like, there was this one that I got where, like, you can tell he's, like, trying to maintain his calm i don't even be know nice. there's one time where he gets a shot in where she says something about how um they were done at the time and he and will just goes yeah and i kicked her ass to the curb just out of nowhere and just starts cracking up laughing and i was like this man is hurting inside they put a joke they made a joke about like you know bad boys for life from yeah. bad boys the yeah. movie bad marriage for life that's not a good sign if you're making jokes like that about your marriage. I'll just be up front with you. But so like, okay, so here, here from CNN, the couple came together for a special Friday edition of her Red Table Talk show on Facebook to share, of course it's on fucking Facebook, to share their side of the controversy surrounding her relationship with singer August Alsina. According to the superstar couple, they were, quote, going through a very difficult time, end quote, and had broken up when Pinkett Smith started a romantic relationship with the 27-year-old singer. Quote, I actually sat... Oh, this is from Alcina, okay? During the interview that I just spoke to with the Breakfast Club chick. I actually sat down with Will and had a conversation. Due to the transformation from their marriage to a life partnership that they have spoken on several times and not involving romanticism, he gave me his blessing. That's the strangest part of the story to me. Will Smith sat down with this dude eye to eye and told him, yeah, you can date my wife basically or whatever i don't really know then during this red table talk jada goes on to explain the situation right Mm -hmm. which is essentially that this this dude august was in a terrible place mentally so this is where it gets really weird as somebody that struggles with mental health but yes continue and it's one of the things that arian foster pointed out last night that makes it as he said like it's almost predatory it's not necessarily the good the best look. And Jada goes on to explain. Oh, it's most certainly not the best look. No. Jada goes on to explain down the line where she says something. I have the quote. Uh, something along the lines. She just. So Jada says she got into an entanglement. That's what August. she keeps calling it. An entanglement. And she said it started because she just wanted to feel good. And he made. And it felt really good to heal someone. Which is what she followed that up with. Which, which again sounds, somebody, sounds toxic. Somebody that struggles with mental health, I have learned, and also an empathic person, 
I've learned that I cannot both help somebody and help myself at the same time because, as an empath, I take on their emotions, fix their issue, and I'm right back to square one because I haven't done anything to fix my own issues. You're not doing nothing for yourself, right. So it doesn't make any sense that she said she just wanted to feel good. But also she's helping this kid. Yeah, and she was also in pain. But she just wanted to help this kid. They, you can't do both at the same time. It just it just makes it all the more confusing. Um, of course, one of the more fucked up things that has come of this is because the internet is undefeated. Y'all know the fucking clip from Fresh Prince of Bel Air where it's Will talking to his da- his, I guess stepdad mm-hmm. technically or whatever the dude that takes him in. Yeah. In Bel Air, um, and they're talking about Will's father, who abandoned him, right? And one of the famous quotes is, why don't he want me, man? They remix that whole shit with somebody who does an incredible Will Smith voiceover so that the whole thing is about August Alsina. And it's the funniest. So it's why don't she want me, man? Yeah. And But it's the most – it's hilarious, but it's also, like, heartbreakingly brutal. Yeah. Just because it's real. Like, this legitimately happened. And because of his face on this, like, he's already been the, – the crying Jordan – may have been replaced by Will Smith's face in Honestly, this I was going to say, that's one of the most... That will that video will go on to be memed for the next six months. It's already bad. Like, it's I was on Twitter last everywhere. night before bed, and I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. And that's the other part of this. Like, And another thing that Arian said last night, this shit is none of our business. Exactly. The problem is, they made it our business. Instead of just leaving it at whatever this fucking dude said and releasing some PR statement and they could have put the whole thing to bed... They decided to sit down and address it in a way that was, like, on her side, clearly very calculated, sort of. Like, it just, the whole thing rubs you the wrong way as you're watching. You can tell she's got, she's very, very careful when she speaks, and she's doing the kind of calculated hand placements. It just... Entanglement. Entanglement. All the verbiage, the vocabulary, she makes it very clear that she doesn't think she made any transgressions at all, right after Will says that she made transgressions. So... And she just, on her end, it makes it seem like she wants it to be like Will was on the same page from the start to the finish. But he never seems like it. It does not seem like he was even close to being on the same page, which is where things get so messy. And this way of fixing things doesn't make any sense. The whole thing is just a shit show. It doesn't make sense. There's two of the most recognizable faces in Hollywood. Why did... I don't get it. It's so bizarre. And it happened four years. They talk about that in the video, too, where they're like... I don't really understand why we're bringing this back up, but obviously there's still things to be fixed because Will looks destroyed. And if it was that long ago and that much time has passed, they should have been had this conversation a hundred times yeah. together to make it right, where clearly that it's not the case. Because, no. And look, that takes us back to what I was saying up front. That family... It, 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 look, I understand Will Smith is an icon, one of the more loved celebrities in the United States. And I understand maybe the world, maybe. And I understand that it that it's un, it, that it sucks to look at it this way. But like, it is a freak show. Their family is the furthest thing from like normal. And I don't, I don't like to judge people based on that. Like, we've had a lot of people on this show who talk about open relationships, or um, we've had we had uh, we've had people. I'm not gonna say his name because I don't want it to get weird. But we, we've had people on this show who are married that have other people involved in their marriage that are not part of the marriage like we've we I don't knock people for whatever they need to do but if yeah. in the case that it is very clear that one of the two people is totally not cool with what happened and it was that long ago and it still doesn't really make sense and here's the other thing that I fucking thought of when we were watching this shit mm-hmm. if the shoe was on the other foot and it was Will Smith explaining to Jada Pinkett Smith this situation He'd be fried off the face of the fucking earth because, I mean, obviously toxic masculinity is more hated than whatever version of toxic femininity she's got going. It's just a very, I don't know, the whole thing is just rubs me the wrong way. The fact that she allegedly was there to help him and he's significantly her younger and... And the kid, by the way, in the interview doesn't seem like... Happy. He's heartbroken. Like, he's still yeah. fucked up. At the very end, Jada said there was something that happened with Will. Oh, Will also denies giving them explicit permission. Um, so the kid says the video, he got permission, but Will, Will says he didn't says give Will says he never gave him explicit permission. Jada says it, the permission idea came because Will was allowing, not allowing, Will was 
not romantically involved. So I guess Will's saying there was never a conversation and Jada's saying he just thought that because we were no longer involved or something. That's another place where it gets really messy. But um, it's messy at the everywhere. end, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's a shit show. But they got kids shit and show. shit. That's yeah. the other part of this. And like, Jaden was the one that introduced August and Jada. Which maybe if, I guess that's the second weirdest part of it all. That one of their kids introduced August Alsina to his mother, Jada Pinkett Smith, who then carried on a sexual relationship with him in an attempt to heal him while she was also hurting while her and Will were not romantic. <laughs> I just can't get over it. And what'd you do, Jada? And and what'd you do, Jada? Over and over and over throughout the course. Three, of three times he said that word for word, yeah. It's like what, ten minutes? Y'all gotta well, go watch it. Minutes, if yeah, you haven't you have seen the thing, it. it's so fucking uncomfortable oh it's so cringy it's so cringy but you have to see it i mean to, to really understand it you absolutely have to watch the video from start to finish and even then like i still don't under they didn't come to any conclusions at all no if anything it seems like they just it's made worse. it worse yeah it's much worse the, and it, 12 minutes was not nearly enough to divulge everything that they went over it, it in so abruptly like they're so in such an intimate moment of getting through everything that's happened in the last four years and then it's just like okay well we're good let's go and we'll be back next week on red <laughs> table talk and it's exactly. like who the fuck are you gonna have next what? week that's gonna top this insane shit and look mm. i don't mean to knock will by calling him the fresh P prince of cuck but there's another story here that i'd like to touch on very briefly jada pinkett smith dated tupac shakur and there was like I can't remember the exact circumstances of the interview that took place at some point where I watched her side of it speaking to like their love or whatever, her and Tupac, and then I watched Will speak on it, and it it just felt like he was undermining himself, like like he thought of himself as less than Pac, who's been dead for however many years, bro. Like years now or something. It, 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 just, it just is another layer to their weird shit, and when you factor in all the Scientology, and I, I will say, at least Jaden has one good song. Icon is a tight song. It is a tight song. That's a tight song, so I can ride with that. But yeah, look, again, not necessarily trying to like shit on anybody who has an open relationship or who who dates people out of their age range or whatever. Like, I, I don't have a problem with that. You can go with the Pretty Ricky song, Age is Just a Number, if you want to, although that gets very scary and creepy immediately. Um, but this shit here, son, it just didn't feel right. At all. Everything about it makes you feel bad for both, not just for Will, for both of them. You're just yeah. like, what the fuck is this? How would you possibly attempt to make a happy life out of this? Like, what the fuck do you, how do you explain something like that to your children in a way that they can grow up and like wrap their heads around? I, I don't know. This is what happens when you live, in I'm telling you, man, LA is tight. Fame is tight if you handle it well. But you get stuck out there in that Hollywood bubble too long and you start to do weird shit. Like date people that your children introduced you to when you're on a break with, with your, your husband. Of like 20 years. Who's one of the most famous people on the planet and continuously uh, one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood. Yep. Yep, that is it. I think if anything, this should just teach you that regardless of what kind of relationship you're in, communication is absolutely key and number one. And also, I mean, it does humanize celebrities a little bit, I guess, in the sense that, you know, they... You see them dealing with shit, yeah. They go through the same shit that we go through. Um, but as a society, I mean, it's just, it comes... It's crazy how big of a deal this is and how much people care about, like literally just like a, a celebrity relationship that's consistently celebrated and how easily that foundation starts to crumble when you really look into it. And how often does that shit happen? All the time. We idolize these Hollywood couples. That are normal people. and they n But they never make it either. Because, no. like, dude, the relationships and marriages, and I can tell you this now, are hard enough as it is. When you add in that level of fame and then you start throwing in 21-year younger rappers and shit, it 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 you you it's gonna fuck things up like that maybe a bit all in all, just one of the strangest celebrity interviews I've ever watched, and it's two celebrities like basically interviewing each other, um and and probably one of the more cringeworthy things I've ever seen in my life, fucking bizarre. RBP312 is also brought to you by Raycon. Whether you're working from home or working on your fitness, you want what you're listening to to be what you're listening to, not what your girlfriend or your roommate or whoever the shit else is around is listening to. Everyone needs a great pair of wireless earbuds. 
But before you go dropping hundreds of dollars on a pair, you need to check out the wireless earbuds from Raycon. You already know Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market. They sound just as amazing as the top audio brands you know. Their newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds, they're the best ones yet. I've got a pair. I showed them to Chris right before we came up here, actually. They got six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass. It, it, all in all, I've been rolling with Raycon for a couple years now, and this is their best pair that they have put out yet, in my opinion, the Everyday E25 earbuds. It's a more compact design, gives you a nice noise-isolating fit, and their earbuds are so comfortable, perfect for conference calls or binging podcasts. I really like them, man. I'm, I'm done jogging with them, played basketball with them, done CrossFit with them. And what's important to me with earbuds, not only is obviously that they sound good and that they're comfortable, but that they stay in my friggin' ear. And the Raycons do all of those things. So unlike your other wireless options, Raycon earbuds are both stylish and discreet with no dangling wires or stems to distract anyone during video calls. You've heard me talking about how the company was co-founded by Ray J and celebrities like Snoop Dogg and J.R. Smith are obsessed with Raycons. Pick up a pair, see what all the hype is about. Uh, get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash Ross, R-O-S-S. That's buyraycon, R-A-Y-C-O-N.com slash Ross for 15% off Raycon wireless earbuds. Buyraycon.com slash Ross. Next segment, TikTok for TikTok. So to add to the fucking drama of the world, especially related to China, uh, it turns out there is quite a bit going on with TikTok. What is what has become now? What it, I, I think maybe it's not the most popular social media app in the world by usership. I I don't know. I haven't looked at the numbers, but it's one of them. It is by far and away the hottest in terms of gaining exposure, followers, view count, all that shit. They're crushing Instagram, crushing Snapchat because Facebook and Zuck do what they do, and algorithm the fuck out of you and make you pay to play, TikTok's newer. And TikTok, honestly, is the inverse. The algorithm literally works for you. Yeah. Um, like, for, like, you had, mine, dude, yeah. T- tell that, t- talk about that video you put. My very first TikTok that I ever posted on my account, it was like this, like I was saying, I, I was blessed enough to grow up on a lake up in North Carolina, and when we're on the lake, we, you know, do our best to get content, take videos and everything like that. So I have all this archive footage on my phone and my computer of just years of going on the lake and doing fun things, trying to have a good time uh, and just really messing around and getting creative with it. We all like to do creative things up there. But anyways, so I, I edit some of this stuff Are you stuff claiming together. the entire city is creative people? Lake Norman is a very creative area, I'll be no honest. No shit. Uh, uh, very. Like, we have a lot of... Uh, I just wouldn't have guessed that. We have, a, like, Char- I mean, look at Charlotte. Charlotte, the baby just came out of Charlotte. We have a lot of more oh, yeah, uh, up-and-coming artists coming out of Charlotte that are newer and uh, younger, and they're all doing really good things. There's a lot of resources around in Charlotte. It's a really up-and-coming city, honestly. But anyways... Um, so, and also my neighbor, you know, just hit a million followers on TikTok. Shout out to Mr. Alex Presley, who's the inventor of the Quarantine Olympics for you people that are TikTok people Yeah, out if there. y'all have seen the Quarantine Olympics ever, at one point Chris sent me this shit and was like, dude, this is my fucking neighbor. Like, this guy's like my brother. He's he's awesome. Uh, he's a 26. He's he been like an older he dominated the quarantine. Dominated yeah. quarantine, honestly. Without quarantine, he would be flying uh, sh- planes with shipments in them right now. And, so, and then quarantine happened. He started TikTok and now he's popping off. So, anyway, and that's another reason. So what I was going to say, I edited a bunch of my footage together, threw it up on TikTok as a joke with the premise that uh, the first part of the video is like slow music, doing slow things. And it says what my mom thinks we do on the lake. And then it cuts to another part that says what we really do on the lake. And the beat drops and it's a whole different song. And you're raging. Yeah, and we're raging. Yeah, Yeah. we're going pretty hard. Yeah, yeah. Um, And so that one within, I think, seven days had hit 2.4 million views. Uh, 650,000 likes. And Again, I, first I, video he's ever made on First this. video I ever made. And from that video alone, I got all 10,000 of my TikTok followers. I posted one since and just kind of like, I don't have enough time to Wait, edit more videos Wait, you have 10,000 like TikTok right followers? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Um, See, this is what I mean by, though, in terms of, like, explosiveness. Yeah. Huge. You, Dude, you cannot get, get ten, that many views. Not even close. On Instagram with shit anymore. Like, go look at our fucking Instagram. Dude, when we hit 5K views on a video on Instagram, on RBP's Instagram. That's a good post. That's a win, bro. So to talk about millions. With no, and this is with no audience too. And so that's why I think TikTok really, really blew up so quickly. Because if you put out good content, 
or you're an attractive girl that can dance a little bit, which that's a weird side of TikTok. But or, if you put or, out or an attractive dude who can, as uh, as the dudes at Barstool put it, wiggle dick a little bit. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, and put on a glitter filter on your face. Yeah. But anyways. If you put out good content, you can get exposure and you can get big on TikTok, which there's no other platform out there, honestly, that does that. YouTube, Not anymore. you have to have an audience for it. Um, I mean, really, any platform right now, you have to start with an audience. And now, as a guy who's been in social media for 10 years, I can tell you this is how each major platform starts. Yeah. Okay? Facebook, back in the day, like 2014, that was where 90% of the traffic for our websites came from because Facebook was that spot. And their gotcha. algorithm on the main feed was set up to where, I mean, you hit the jackpot every time you put up a post, bro. You were getting those millions of views and exposure and clicks and all that good shit that you want as a content person. Then Zuckerberg shut off the fire hose. Zuckerberg did. Fucked us all hard, and yeah. I mean so hard. And if you were working on websites back at that point, you know this because your traffic plummeted unless you paid for Facebook advertising to get those same views. And basically, they were like, we'll show you what we can do for you, and now you have to pay for it. Yeah. Then they bought Instagram. Instagram, when it first came out, was that next spot because Facebook at the time didn't own Instagram yet, and Facebook had gone the pay-to-play route. Instagram then became that spot where you could really build – and pick up momentum quickly and get a ton of views and go viral, as we'll call it. Yeah, the old Explore page was huge for that. Yes, and there was, again, and that's sort of the way that TikTok, TikTok operates almost entirely. The whole thing's almost an Explore page. Exactly, like, yeah. You just go video to video, scroll, 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 and it's like built so perfectly for that. Mm -hmm. I will note, it that also inflates your numbers, right? Because you're looking at like, I mean, who knows who the fuck's paying attention? You're scrolling through, oh, yeah. you're getting a view, but like, are they watching it? Or are they not watching it? It's one of those weird things. When Facebook had issues with that back in the past, too, they were like highly inflating their video views for the sake of making themselves look better. And it turned out not a lot of it yeah. was not actually good views. But point being, then Facebook buys Instagram. They short us, they, they shut off the nozzle again, right? Instagram, as I've noticed over this past six months, I'm like, why the fuck am I getting 5,000 views when I used to get 10,000? Yeah. Dude, I get, mo and here's a weird thing about Instagram. I get more views on my Instagram story, my yeah. personal one, than I do on any of our videos on either RBP or OCC 100%. or which makes no fucking sense. It's because they switched. It's it ha, it all started happening when they switched up the algorithm to change the feed from chronological to whatever they changed the algorithm to. Because now stories they still go chronological, so mm -hmm. that's why your stories get still pop off because people see them up there. But then the the posts like sometimes I'll scroll through my feed and it'll um. I'll get like three RBP posts back to back to back from four separate days or something like that just because it decides to put them like that. I routinely see posts that are from like, you know, two days ago yeah. or like 19 hours ago. And I'll see like I'll get up in the morning and be checking Instagram and see news that I saw like the night before the day before. And yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is Why this? Why is this on here? It's just a mess. All of that to say. None of those other ones I just spoke. Oh, there was also a point with Twitter, even before Facebook, where Twitter was that jam, where you could get get your shit like that on Twitter. That's no longer the case, bro. You cannot really blow up like that with that level of uh, speed on Twitter anymore. Yeah. But I have never seen one of these platforms that provides any human being, like you said, you put up your first one and got over a million views with the opportunity to gain an audience, build a platform, and get a big start, which is what we now have all of these like 16-year-old TikTok celebrities literally making hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars off of advertising based on their followings. They become full-blown celebrities. And for people even Look younger at, than you, yeah. like my old ass 33-year-olds, we don't fuck with TikTok, no. bro. Like we don't know what the fuck is going Honestly, on Honestly, 21, like my buddy to Alex to pop off at 26, like he's probably at the at the one very of the older top. guys. Yeah, one of the older guys on TikTok. I mean, the the you go on your explore page, which this is my biggest issue with TikTok is it's like 16-year-old girl, 15-year-old girl, 16-year-old boy. It just feels inappropriate. It just, yeah, it does. Even though it's not necessarily anything explicit, it's still like you know what you're doing Dude, here. Dude, there's you a know? lot of sexuality to it, though. There is there a lot, is of, sexuality a lot to it. of underage sexuality to it, which is one of the things. So, like, basically, what has come up to get to the sort of story here? Um, basically, what has come up over this past couple weeks, based on, you know, the United States continuously deteriorating relationship with China mm -hmm. and really the whole world. Um, <laughs> that's so sad <sighs> to say. What a time. We have, uh, they have begun questioning because China, I mean, uh, TikTok is a Chinese 
company that yes. owns TikTok. Okay, they have an American CEO, which makes the story even stranger. But essentially, what 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 has been put out there is that there are all these security risks. All of these people and companies are now worried about their data being taken by China. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a lot of China fear mongering that goes on, and uh, some of it might be very legit. For all I know, I don't know fuck about what what the Chinese do. I don't think many people do. Yeah. They're pretty good at being secretive, yeah. but it has become a very big issue to the point that we've got like Secretary of State Mike Pompeo saying that they're considering banning TikTok from the country. Meaning that if you are a United States internet user not using an illegal way VPN, to access it, yeah. VPN, you uh well, I guess VPNs are legal. I'm not really sure. I'm very unclear on how VPNs work still. But anyway, that, that they you will no longer have access if they had decided to do this. Now, it comes off as more of a threat to me than anything, but the quote he dropped is he warned uh, that TikTok puts, quote, your private information in the hands of the Chinese Communist Party. So for the Secretary of State of the United States to say that is obviously a very big deal, uh, considering yeah. the size of this app and how many people use it and the age group of the audience. But According to a lot of what I've been reading today, so much of this is, is, is basically like exaggerated, right? Like a lot of it. All of our apps that we use are boning us data wise. Yeah. It's not like, I mean, we've gotten to the point where back in the day we all used to joke about, like, I'm pretty sure my phone can hear me, man. I was talking about buying a wakeboard and then I got 36 wakeboard ads. But now we all just know that's actually the case. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's, I mean, like, it's the it's the insertion of the Chinese side of it that makes people paranoid, right? Because we just all have this big red scare thing building up in the United States again. It's almost like back in the Cold War with yeah. Russia. And uh, as a result, you got people deleting the damn app, jumping off, jumping ship. India Some big names. It. Did you see India banned the app completely? And, like, 50 other apps that were developed by China or developed in China, India just completely took them off the app store, gone. Sweet Lord. And um, the only thing that I can really find that's legitimate data of what TikTok may be doing is I have a quote from the Washington Post saying, when he opened the TikTok app, he found approximately 210 requests in the first nine seconds, totaling over 500 kilobytes of data sent from the app to the internet. That's the equivalent of basically 125 pages of type data, mostly of which is things like screen resolution and Apple advertising identifier that could be used to fingerprint your device even when you're not logged in. Which sounds pretty similar to what probably most other social media apps do as soon as you log in as well to and especially the fact that every single time you open the tiktok app it's developing the algorithm to give you the videos to watch i don't know how much of this is just overhype or not like i see where people could be paranoid about it but let's be honest here our information is out there everywhere now unless you're so safe about it there's another really good example that you and i came across recently as well new video game came out pc game called valorant okay and for those of you who are gamers it's essentially like if you mix counter-strike and overwatch very similar and uh what comes with valorant is an anti-cheat what is it called anti-cheat just an anti-cheat program a lot of games have that are simplistic in code like Valorant, which theoretically could be easily hacked because, you know, if you, like, if you hacked Valorant, you could break a game very, very easily because it would make your player unbelievably overpowered. Well, some other games, maybe not quite that much. So Valorant, and also because it wants to be taken very seriously on the competitive scene, yes. introduced one of the most strict and intense anti-cheats to ever exist in the history of gaming. To have Valorant launch... You have to have had Vanguard running your entire time that your computer is powered on. You can't start Vanguard after you open Valorant. It has to be running the entire time. So, like, as an example, I fired up my computer the other day, and Vanguard starts up automatically. Instantly. Which, which people are conf- concerned that means that immediately, again, this the reason we're bringing this up, it's another Chinese-owned company. And it has access in its code. It has administrative admissions uh, for your computer. So, theoretically it could access pretty much anything on your PC with the admissions that are coded into the Vanguard Vanguard anti Which sounds 
scary Su- suspect when yes. they when this news broke I have not played the game since yeah. and it wasn't necessarily because I was like man I don't want the Chinese getting my data man I was just like I don't like fucking with shit that sounds that suspect yeah absolutely so it's just another example of one where so it, but to your point when I fired up my computer I closed the Vanguard app every time just um you know uh, instinctively now it's like part of what I do I just do it without even thinking and then I tried to fire up Valorant and you literally cannot Can't. if you haven't you- had Vanguard open the whole time your PC has been on for that session, yep. it will not let you open. You literally the game. have to restart your computer to get it up, just to make sure that. Well, according to them, to make sure there's no cheats preloaded or anything like that already ready to go. It's understandable that it has an administrative permission because that allows it to see all the data and make sure you're not cheating. But at the same time, it's just the idea that it could access anything in your computer is definitely suspect. And as we move into an age where data is going to become pretty much everything, almost Westworld style, where people will have a complete... Oh, we're there, man. Yeah, I mean, we're there, yeah. Um, The war for data and how to keep yourself private is going to get really, really interesting. And it's uh, that's the thing that's gotten strange for me is like if an algorithm, you know, and this is what you just said, Westworld, all those different shows that sort of tackle this sort of thing. If an algorithm can determine everything about you, yeah, that freaks me out. Yeah. Like just that concept of like it knows what to sell me. It knows what I want to buy. It knows what music I want to listen to. It knows everything about me. It knows which porn I watch. It knows which TV shows I enjoy, which yeah. my favorite movies are, like what relationships I've been in, every member of my family. Like, it's 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 not even that I know what the fuck they could do with that data to make my life in somehow in jeopardy or like worse than it currently is. It's just the idea that like, bro, who are these people? Like, I don't fucking know these yeah, people. No, exactly. Now they know everything about me. Like, yeah. what the fuck? It's just strange. And social media and the internet is still so much in its infancy that, like, I mean, really, that shit's in my lifetime, bro. Oh, the internet fucking became the internet. I mean, I didn't, like, iPhones weren't a thing until I was in middle school. I mean, it was part, it's part of my life. Like, I didn't grow up with an iPhone. I didn't grow up with a phone. I had walkie-talkies until I was probably, I was probably the, I was born in 99, so I was probably the last generation of kids to grow up without mass cell phones until we were, like, I didn't get a phone until 1999. I was 13, I Holy shit. Boomer. I was born in 87. I am a boomer. I deleted TikTok off my phone in true boomer fashion, by the way. We have an RBP TikTok out there somewhere um, that we may or may not even focus on at this point based on everything that's going on. Yeah, we'll see what happens. It's just it's just a crazy situation um, in, a, in an already crazy fucking social media world to see that now the hottest social media app in the game is enduring this level of scrutiny, weird suspicion. We got fucking Secretary of State's speaking on social media apps when we're in the midst of a pandemic worldwide pandemic recession kind of china thing. being like tied all into it yeah. too the whole story Election is just, coming up it's just it's absolutely bonkers so had to touch on it did we say ninja deleted his tiktok ninja did delete his tiktok yeah he huge huge loss for everybody yeah sorry about that guys i know how much you all love the blue-haired man yeah i know ross, ross really loves the blue-haired man I'm, I'm re- I, I want to fight that kid. Yeah, I know. I really, I know. really want to fight that we'll kid. We'll get you there one day. Yeah. Well, anyway. Who do you think has more reach? You guys are both like 6'3". I, I would say him. Yeah. I'm not worried about his reach. No? That kid's, if we fought, it would, no. That would not be a, a he, no. He's, come on. What is, he's a NARP. A non-athletic regular person. He is a NARP, yeah. Yeah. He's a NARP that's making like 20 million a year off gaming, but he is a NARP. Now, he could pay a thousand people to beat the shit out of me. That's true. Which would be a problem. For your boy. So we'd need some ground rules. Anyway, if you have TikTok, just something to think about. And really with all of your internet and technology interactions, man, like the more the deeper we get into this world of technology, the more important it is that you stay protected and make sure you're taking the proper steps to like you don't want you don't want people to have data on you that they don't need to have, right? We all want to protect ourselves, stay as private as we can, and maintain our lives without having to be served an ad. For a fucking wakeboard every five minutes or whatever the shit. So I don't know, man. I don't know what to make of this yet. The story's not completely over. Will we end up banning it in the U.S.? I highly fucking doubt it. But yeah. if that happened, it would be the craziest thing that has ever happened in social media. The content that came out of it, though, would be hilarious. These kids would telling, be losing their fucking minds. So I was telling Ross about a story about um, I saw on Snapchat that this girl that lives in my town as well, she has, I think, 
couple hundred thousand followers on TikTok. I guess TikTok had, TikTok had a glitch or something like that last week oh, yeah. where all of their <laughs> videos went to zero views. All their views went to zero, yeah. Yeah, and I saw a reaction of her looking at her TikTok with zero views, bawling, crying. It's just so many people have genuinely invested so much time into this. For it to all be ripped away would be quite the scene. And I can tell you, I remember what that felt like with Facebook. And it wasn't good. Yeah, and these don't content that creators upon will burn it down yeah. if they take TikTok away. So it's something to watch out for, just something to keep an eye on as that story continues to develop and as as our uh, our lovely government continues to sow fear of China left and right. And then to, it's to the point where I'm like, I fucking believe half this shit. I'm just like, I'm not going to China. I mean, I don't fucking mm-hmm. know. Right now, I don't fucking Well, we're not going anywhere right now, no, bro. We're stuck. We're actually camping out in the pod room for two weeks. Yeah, we're going to live in this sauna it's about a thousand degrees in austin if anybody wanted to know yeah they weren't joking about the texas heat guys that's not a joke sweet sweet lord it is hot outside we actually had two segments left and we're gonna have to hold one because we're running out of time because we're crushing this so let's do the last segment what in the wide world of sports we can't not talk about the situation unfolding in the nba right now i mean literally as of this morning the two most important players on my favorite basketball team, which uh, I'm looking at, there's a James Harden bobblehead just ironically right in front of me here. Russell Westbrook has been positively uh, tested for COVID-19. Cannot enter the bubble. If you didn't know this, they built a bubble. I think it's in Orlando. Orlando yeah. Where the whole league that is participating in this uh, eight-game play-in and then playoff situation or whatever it is that they've set up for the rest of the season. By the way, there's a second bubble for the loser teams, which is really, really funny to me. Um, But Westbrook can't get into the bubble yet because he's tested positive. James Harden still hasn't arrived. It It is being speculated that he also tested positive. The fact that this bubble exists at all is unbelievably funny. It was crazy expensive for the NBA to put it together. We all know we love sports and we want sports back, but we all know how, you know, nonstop changing this situation is. And we, I, I for one, do not understand how they're going to pull it off. Um, so the first side of it is that m- my team is fucked, possibly. The second side of it is that the bubble is hilarious. J.R. Smith so checked funny. into his room and it's like it's a nice hotel, bro. It's like a three star hotel or but whatever. But it is like, one of the. Is it one of the like Disney hotels? Uh, yes, I believe okay. so. Yeah, one of the Disney World or Land. I forget which one's where. Yeah. Um, hotels, but like it's a nice hotel. Any, yeah. uh, any normal human would be thankful yeah, to stay in these absolutely. hotels. But you put all these millionaire, twenty three to thirty five year old dudes in and these places, and you're ripping them out of their luscious mansions with their private chefs and their cars and their fucking clothes and their ladies, and you've got yourself one hell of a weird situation. It's like J.R. Smith goes live on Instagram like the second he gets into his room and he's just like he started ripping on it then during the live he received a text message from the NBA telling him to stop uh but there's been a lot of like like they had photos of their first meal there oh that was and classic. it was like an airplane tray classic so then people started comparing it to Firefest, which is just wildly inaccurate and maybe if you're making that comparison you need to go back and watch Firefest again because oh my god it was so much worse but they're, it's not the food that they are accustomed to. One of the jokes on Twitter was like, there's literally no fucking way LeBron James is eating this food. Not you know, even close. Damn well he's not eating this food. Um, but just So the bubble alone is hilarious. All these dudes are like fishing and playing video games all day. Another Twitter joke has been made that like the next super team is already being formed right now via like war zone squads Honestly, within the bubble. Yeah. Uh, it's just this insane. Like, we've never seen anything like this in our lifetime, obviously. But the way it's impacted the sports world is almost one of the strangest parts of this whole thing. Absolutely. Did you see the news about up in the MLB team? I want to say the Tigers released a statement that if you leave the premises that they had set up, you could be fined up to $750,000 for for breaking quarantine. Oh, by the way, another Rockets player broke quarantine already. Rockets forward Bruno Caboclo already broke quarantine, quote, inadvertently oops i don't know how you do that and is now stuck in his room for eight days so he can't even leave his room in the bubble your rockets are doing really good the shit is going on with i don't know who that is for the record he's probably not going to make the team i I, or maybe he's already on the team i don't even know how this works what the fuck is this season and we're trying to do every league and i get why money i understand why they have to try it just seems like the odds of any of these leagues actually working out 
are like s- slim next to none. Yeah. Like, how, bro, we had day four, I think it was, Insta thoughts claiming that they had already received invites to the bubble. I mean, these are NBA players used to the lifestyle. They're living like Riley 24-7. Like, that doesn't surprise me at all. They have tracking bands And they're on. in Orlando. Like, they're, they're in got, Florida. They literally have tracking devices on the players. They're on house arrest. It's fucking crazy. That's like, it is the craziest Does shit, Does it track dude. heart rate, too, just in case some coitus is occurring in the bedroom? Who knows? Who the fuck knows? It's like Adam Silver's got a camera in each room. It's just beep, beep, beep. So send somebody to 211 right now. That's what we I'm got imagining. a heart rate spike. That's what I'm imagining. Adam Silver, who already looks hilarious. He's got a massive, it's like it's a evil giant. villain, massive, like 30 screens on yes. the wall. Just hmm. 50 TV screens stacked up. Boop, boop, They're boop. switching from room to room, and he's watching what each player is doing, and they don't even know it. Like, that's what I have in my head. But all in all, look, I'm, I'm a huge, 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 huge Rockets fan and a huge fan of the NBA. It's far and away my favorite league. When they started throwing out how they planned on pulling off this season, I was like, <laughs> y'all built a bubble? I've just been so confused about how this was going to play, and now literally it's falling apart from my squad before my eyes on Monday, which is just its just brutal. But fingers crossed that they can pull off the NBA thing. Fingers crossed the NFL is reporting in, like, tomorrow, and then guys are starting to trickle in, I think. Like, the coaches get there tomorrow. Yeah. I'm not joking. And then there's going to be dudes that start to trickle in. So, like, they're getting ready to try the NFL – the NBA is just the craziest one because, like, bro, when you play basketball, you sweat all over each other. You're in a fucking tank top and shorts, sweating all over everyone else on the court. So I just don't see how you pull it off. Thankfully, we have something that is absolutely happening this weekend. A golf tournament. Yes. Thank God the memorial is still happening. And Tiger is back, which means that a shitload of people will watch it and it will be fun. Now, he hasn't been doing so well, so he's not going to be one of my picks this week. But I do have three guys that I'm throwing $100 each on on mybookie.ag. John Ram being the first and the longest shot at plus 2200 100 bucks on the Ram. Dustin Johnson, Rom, Ram, whatever the fuck. Dustin Johnson plus 1600 I'm throwing 100 on him. And Justin Thomas plus 1100 I'm throwing 100 on him. Because, uh, look, man, I can't really watch golf without betting on it. It's just not that exciting unless Tiger's in the hunt, and it sounds like he's not quite back up to snuff where that's going to be the case this weekend. I'm not willing to bet on him at this point. So those are my three guys, all of them, you know, being long. That's 100 bucks paying out 1100 100 bucks paying out 1600 100 bucks pl- paying out 2200 That's how sports betting works. We've all been starved for sports so far. All we've gotten is a little bit of soccer and a good amount of golf, some UFC, that weird Fight Island shit took place this weekend. If y'all got action on that at mybookie.ag, I hope you enjoyed it. I heard the main events were a bit of a letdown, but my ass was enduring some mental health issues and didn't get to watch. But we do have something, and one of our sponsors, mybookie.ag, is the place to get that hot sports betting action now that things are getting back to the place where maybe we get at least a couple of these seasons that actually take place and are in full swing. At the very least, like I said, we've got the golf tourney this weekend. We've had some UFC. We've had some soccer. Football's gearing up. Basketball. They're at least going to try. There are going to be games. Yeah. You can bet on, like, who's going to win the whole fucking championship already. You can bet on literally 100 different things on mybookie.ag already for the NBA, MLB, NFL, UFC. You can bet on... Like how many games they'll go before the season gets shut down and shit like that because it's yeah they've got all kinds of great uh, what are they called perks not perks what the shit of the what the shit of the little bets you make on games I'm having a brain fart I don't do enough sports betting oh I suck doesn't matter y'all know the word I'm I love this about podcasting when there's like seven thousand people screaming at their radios right now like you fucking idiot. You know what I'm saying? Those little bets, like how you can bet on the NFL coin flip or you can bet on who will win the tip, like Adam Sandler's insane ass did in Uncut Gems, by the way. But, uh, yeah, mybookie.ag has a great, easy-to-use website. They make understanding the lines and all your different betting options easier to understand than any other online. Prop bets. Thank you, Chris. Better than any other online sports book I'm aware of. Prop bets. And they have incredible prop bets. They've been responsive as hell on social media whenever I've had questions. They've ensured me they're going to take good care of y'all. From your computer to your cell phone, you've got instant access to action with mybookie.ag, whether you're at work or on the go. Sign up now using the code RBP. Get yourself some extra cash on top of that, uh, on top of your deposit. If you put in 100 bucks, 
they'll spot you a free $50 to play with as well. That's a 50% bonus with the code RBP when you sign up on mybookie.ag. Make sure you read how the deposit bonuses work. All online casinos and sports books have uh, deals like this, but it's not just free money. That would be insane. You have to wager a certain amount before you can withdraw based on the deposit bonus. There are stipulations that apply and shit, so look at them. With mybookie.ag, you bet, you win, and most importantly, when you win, you get paid. Code RBP for some extra cashish at mybookie.ag and shouts to them for supporting the show. Now that we are getting back into a season where we could be looking at multiple incredible sports seasons taking place at the same time. If it works, the next six months sports-wise could be The greatest ever. Honestly. If it works, if everything goes like they're saying it might go, which I pray it does, we could be in for a real treat. And sports betting heaven. And sports betting, Like that will probably never happen again in our lifetime where we have NBA, NFL, golf, UFC, soccer, all running at the same time, and you can bet on all of it. I was really hoping they would try to squeeze in a March Madness tournament too at the same time again, and we would get like a Super Bowl, March Madness, NBA championship, MLB. Yeah. Uh final all within like three months of each other world series Finals. World series thank you jesus christ nah, it Rain happens part. um but yes indeed sports go low baby as i said we had one more segment that we wanted to do uh we're going to discuss the uh, you know what i'm not even going to tell you i'm not even going to tell you what it is because we're going to do it on the next show and i don't want you to just go read about it yourself then that takes away the fun of us talking about it so that'll do it for today's show but before you head out to take on the world it's time for some very important announcements first and foremost I'm going to give you four legal obligations today. And your first one is to follow Chris Colson everywhere. Chris, one more time, your Instagram, your Twitter, and your Snapchat, please, sir. All right, Twitter is at Q0ULS Coles. Uh, Instagram is at Chris SC99. That's C H R I S S C99. And Snapchat is at Chris underscore Colson. Colson is C O U L S O N. Follow the man everywhere. If you do not, the lawyers will come for you. If you do, I can call off the dogs, but only after you finish these three other checked boxes as well. Rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. Um, If you've never done that and you're enjoying RBP, if you're new to RBP, rating and reviewing does a ton for us. Please make sure you do that. Next, tell one friend, family member, coworker, or neighbor, any one individual that you think would enjoy the show. For many of you, if you have friends who struggle with mental health issues, share episode 311 with them, which was the mental health episode where I focused entirely on mental health discussion. That's an easy way to complete that legal obligation. Then you can check that box and move on to your fourth and final legal ob, which is to support our sponsors who support us and keep us in business. Birddogs.com, the code is RBP. MyBookie.ag, the code is RBP. Raycon is buyraycon.com slash Ross. Buyraycon.com slash Ross. Those are your four legal obligations. Check the boxes. I call off the dogs. We can all live long and prosper. Follow the show on Instagram at the Ross Boland Podcast. We're on Twitter at Ross Boland Pod. You can find us on Facebook somewhere if you're the middle-aged aunt of one of our listeners. Follow me, Ross Bolin, on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at WR Bolin. We're also on twitch.tv slash boss Roland playing Warzone, and Chris will be back with me on there tonight. You better believe it. Check out Bolin Media's television and film podcast, Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, available wherever RBP is available. And that will do it for Chris Coulson's first ever episode. There we go. How do you feel? Do you feel like you did okay? I think I did okay. I enjoyed it. I had a good time. Looking forward to many more. Me too, man. Yeah? Me too. Good. Well, I'm glad excited. that's it. I'm glad I'm not going home after this one, you know. Fucking excited. Uh, Produced by Grant Davis and Mike Moody Garcia of Permanent Record Studios in Austin, Texas. I'll actually be back later today, I believe, or tomorrow morning with RBP 312. Depends how much I've got going on this afternoon with Chris. Um, But I'm going to knock one out solo for y'all because we had a shortage last week due to me having a very, very difficult mental health week. And then on Wednesday, Coles and I will be back for RBP 313. And then, of course, Friday, we'll be back yet again with another ad-free premium edition of RBP available exclusively on patreon.com slash Ross Bolin Podcast. Ad-free episodes on Friday on Patreon. Get in there and support the show for access. You are not alone. Podman gets paid. Respect, Mr. Park. Strength and honor. Gang, gang, gang. Chris, say it. Peace be with you. And also with you. Yeah! Go low, baby!